People no longer bound by their non-disclosure agreements. What can you now disclose? Uh, I disclosed to a minority partner that the majority partner owed him 100k. He could have easily received a check for that amount. But he sued for 700k. Spent 300k on a lawyer and got nothing. Ha. I saw the owner of a company I worked for do the same thing. A sales employee sued for not getting proper commissions and the CEO easily paid 10 times that amount fighting it in court. Only to lose and have to pay anyways. Spite. Not me but my cousin. He was working his first job in marketing in one of the top marketing firms in the country. My cousin is ridiculously good looking. Used to be a model for ANF. Not just the local store models, but one of the national models. And dress as well. So he get to the job and his boss's boss, male, starts hitting on him ridiculously. He's invited to lunch. Dinner asked if he wants to go to the boss's weekend home. All the time turning him down. One time in the car his boss told him how quickly he would advance if he spent the weekend with him. And my cousin recorded the entire conversation. He nopes the boss and then ghost him on invites 4 weeks until the boss stops asking. Fast forward to 3 months after he's hired and he's doing his review with HR and his immediate supervisor is there. He starts to hear about how he's not a good fit, not a team player etc. They let him know they were terminating him. And he grabbed the paperwork they wanted him to sign and put it in his pocket. Then he pulled out his phone and played his boss's recording. After he was done, he looked at the HR manager and asked if she had anything to say. They both left the room acting shell-shocked and he stayed there in the confer room until the HR manager came back an hour later. She put her boss on the conference line and they started telling him it was illegal to record private conversations. They would file charges etc. He laughed and told them he would go to the press. And that he knows they would love to put him on TV. Three days later he is signing a non-disclosure and picking up a check almost big enough to pay for his three years of law school. For anyone wondering, no the guy who harassed him was not fired. And he has since been promoted again by the company. My best friend worked at a roadside attraction near Chattanooga. TN. Called Ruby Falls. There's something else called Ruby Falls elsewhere in the country. It's supposedly a waterfall inside a cave. Of course, the trail to the cave is ray done with all sorts of rock brought in from around the world. I think they've owned up to that part now. But the waterfall itself is barely a trickle naturally, and then only in the wetter season. They've run a pipe up there to supplement the falls, hidden by cracks and crevices and cemented over, and powered by a pump off to the side, which you can't hear when the water is splashing down from 100 feet overhead. It's 99% from the city of Chattanooga, or maybe Lookout Mountain, municipal water supply. Of course, with such a wet area, old electrical wires going back to the Great Depression, and 300 feet underground, it sputters, or shorts out and stops every now and then. The first rule in the falls room is make everybody leave immediately if the power goes out. Not for safety, but because the fable agreed upon will be shown as fake. The LED effects when you first walk into the cavern are a bit much. I live just up the road, and it is the least recommended tourist attraction when I have guests. Go to the aquarium. The book you're reading might only be a bestseller because the author had enough money to buy thousands and thousands of copies, have them shipped to a warehouse for storage, and eventually destroyed. Always wondered how crappy books were on the NYT BSL and who was buying them. It's not an NDA, it's a secrecy agreement with DOD that elapsed after 25 years. I worked as a programmer for the US Air Force on the global USAF budget in 1979 through early 1981. There was a period of time after Reagan became a leading candidate, but before he won the election or took office, Jimmy Carter was a lame duck president, and many senior officers really, really hated him. During this time, the Yusuf had flown the B-1, not the B-1A, not the B-1B, this was when it was just the B-1. People had spent a significant portion of their careers working on delivering the B-1 program. They really, really believed in the B-1 as a strategic long-range supersonic bomber. Jimmy Carter hated the B-1. He viewed it as a wasteful, unnecessary, bloated program designed to keep the builders afloat at the expense of the taxpayer. He had cancelled the project in something like 77. But a couple, flying examples were available, but never to see service. Reagan loved the B-1. It was everything he loved about our military programs. 
Fast, hot, high tech, and better than anything the Soviets had. All of that being said, here's what happened. Jimmy Carter gave explicit orders that the only two not certain B-1s currently flying be broken up into parts, the program completely cancelled, the engineering materials be archived at the Pentagon, and all funding ended. He wanted direct evidence sent to him that this had happened, in the form of pictures of the broken up aircraft. Ronald Reagan was informed of this order by sources in our organization. Reagan let it be known that Carter's order was absolutely not to be followed under any circumstances. Now, where do I come in? I was just this guy working on the AF budget. It was a top secret clearance, mainly because any analyst could correlate money to named projects, both globally and on bases. So one day I am going over daily reports and I see this massive new expenditure for, I think, Wright Patterson. It's not in the approved project list. It's not in the unapproved project list. So clearly, it has not gone up to Congress. Yet, the money is actually in the dispersal. So I go to my boss and I point it out. It doesn't belong there. So obviously it's a mistake. He agrees. And we reverse it. A couple of days later, all heck breaks loose when a general officer I had never seen before comes rampaging through the office demanding to know who shorted his funding. Now, at this point we get hauled into a room, sought to secrecy, and told to fund this maintenance project. What was the project? Pay a huge team of contractors to very carefully disassemble one of the B1s, drag in parts from other aircraft, show it being crushed, and send pics to Carter. Meanwhile, reassemble the plane and hide both of them inside black hangars. And that was why Reagan was able to have the program restarted literally within days of taking office. The program was fully back online in 1981. Technically, I'm still bound by the NDA, but the company didn't know how to write NDAs. It's like they had the following conversation. Legal. Hey, we need an NDA just like all these other companies have. Publisher. Do you know how to write an NDA? Legal. Number. The NDA was for a role playing game that I signed up to playtest with a group. The NDA itself actually forbade me, the person running the game and providing feedback to the company, from talking about it, but had no such restrictions in place for anyone I ran the game for. It only required me to sign it, not any of my players. The way it was written, I was not allowed to play the game with any of the players in the group. How they expected anyone to playtest the game, I don't know. The way that RPG playtests are supposed to happen is, 1. The company releases a playtest document, 2. People play it, and then, 3. They make changes for another round of playtesting. What actually happened is the company changed the core resolution mechanic of the game in the middle of the first round of testing, in the middle of a long message forum thread. Based on the feedback of people who were openly admitting they only read the rules and hadn't actually played the game. One of the people who stated they hadn't played the game also said he didn't have a group of players they were going to play it with. So they changed the game based on nothing but feedback from people who hadn't tested anything. To top it off, after my group actually played the game and submitted feedback we weren't invited back to the second round of playtesting. Also we were left off the playtest credits. That married grocery store manager in his late 40s was, indeed, freaking that 17 year old Kurt to see Clark in the compressor room. This was 15 plus years ago when I was a person in charge, and not yet a full assistant store manager. Our store in the back room had a couple of rooms upstairs, a large room that housed all of our electrical breakers and backup generators, and a room that housed all of our compressors that kept our freezers and coolers running. Both were locked at all times for security reasons. They were accessible only through the back room. The 17 year old courtesy clerk, Bagger, had worked there for a while. She was, uh, not the best worker. She had a habit of disappearing for a half hour or hour at a time. I, and the other PICs complained and tried discipline, but the store manager blocked it. So, we just dealt with it. Yes, she was an attractive blonde. I was in charge one night and we got an alarm that one of the compressors was low. It was my job to check the level, record the compressor number, and turn it in. When I went up to the room, the door was propped open with a bucket. I assumed whoever worked in the room last left it open. If you have never been in a compressor room before, I have to tell you that it is loud. Our store had several diesel engines that powered the compressors. I proceed into the back of the room. 
come around a corner to see the girl, not quite naked, but not fully clothed, being serviced by our store manager, who had left for the day hours ago, neither saw me and I hightailed it out of there, I wrestled with what to do, I was worried about my career at the time, so I called the security hotline and made an anonymous call and told them in vague terms what happened and that they should contact me about details. I'm 100% certain that they knew it was me that called. A couple of days later, the store manager is suspended, and I'm interviewed. The assistant store manager is interviewed, and the PICs. They tell us not to discuss it, so of course we did. I was a little late to the party. Almost everyone knew. The store manager would use his store keys to come into the back room, meet the courtesy clerk, and then would hook up in the compressor room. She was not the first teenager he had done this with at this store and others. They fire the store manager, and like an idiot, he sues. Dozens of people are deposed, NDAs are drawn up and signed. He thinks better of it, drops the suit and that's the last I ever heard of him. The girl quit right after the store manager was suspended. Happened at my store too. 16 year old CC and 27 year old manager. She's 19 now and they're engaged. I worked at a small bakery in New York City when I was younger. Every morning the bakery would take their day old cupcakes and deliver them to a tour company that did SX and the city tours. The tour company would pass our cupcakes off as cupcakes from Magnolia, and significantly much more popular bakery. I went on that tour with my ex-wife and ate one of those cupcakes. The cupcake was pretty disappointing. Definitely tasted stale. After the cupcake, the tour took us to some swanky little underground bar where they fed us cosmopolitan martinis and then it ended at a corn cob store. They set us up for a good time. When I was fired from Auntie Anne's in 2010, I signed a 10 year non-compete NDA contract, promising not to detail the baking secrets or work for another pretzel establishment. Well that ended this year so now I can run out and start a pretzel store because the secret I was keeping was making pretzels literally requires two products. One of them being water and the other a large bag of pretzel meal dust powder. Quite literally anyone with $2500 can start a pretzel stand and make perfectly fine pretzels. It's not difficult whatsoever. I signed the letter when I was hired but I got a copy with my termination letter. Well you forgot to say what the secret browning agent is that all the pretzels get dipped into before they go on the sheet and into the oven. It's baking soda and water. Mystery solved. Also lemonade too. 4. 8. Refrigerate. You know NDAs are only good if you have the money to sue? Worked with a company that didn't pay me, so I told them their NDA didn't apply. They threatened to sue. My response you can't even afford to pay me, you sure as heck can't afford to sue. They also don't extend to keeping you from reporting illegal activity to the justice system. Some places may try to make people believe that and may even try to imply it in the NDA, but it has no legal standing. I used to work for a large gas station chain. I worked at its warehouse where it creates a lot of the donuts. The room was really hot so we were always sweating. There's some machines where the donuts get glazed in chocolate. They're these small machines they look almost like a BBQ grill. They always wanted us to be super fast glazing the donuts. Working in a hot room and working at super fast speeds it was natural for a lot of people's sweat to just drip in the chocolate underneath us. Never eat the chocolate donuts from a gas station. Honestly if the worst thing in those donuts is humans wet, I'm impressed. I was wrongfully terminated by a past employer. They lowballed the settlement offer and withheld payment on my accrued vacation. This part was actually illegal. It took about a year to get to the point where their attorneys realized that we were not lying about them holding back the accrued vacation and this caused them to make a more than generous offer to make my claim against them go away. I signed an NDA after negotiating a six figure settlement with my mortgage lender. Back in 2013, the bank illegally sold my home. While I was living there and making monthly payments, I discovered this when new owners evicted me and my three kids. At the time, I thought someone was trying to steal my identity, etc. I spent the next two years writing legal documents and had to represent myself in court. The bank owned every legit legal firm I contacted. Also, the first lawyer I hired took my last $7,000 and was promptly disbarred for misconduct with previous cases. I had no money, no home but I had a laptop, 
printer and access to the county court law library. We were about a week away from selecting a jury, when we came to a settlement agreement. In the end, each of my kids, now in their 20s, got an inexpensive new car and I live at the beach. Which bank you ask? I can't tell you the name, but might I suggest that it rhymes with case. They settled because they were worried that if the case went to trial, it would become public. Then, everyone would know, for certain, that they had lied, cheated and swindled to steal homes from hardworking people. The bank would lose when no one took out new loans with them. I received a posting on my front door. I went to the eviction court and lost, because technically the new owners paid for my house. I was given 7 days to move all my stuff, had lived there 13 years or face the sheriff. I had 3 kids, I didn't want the drama of handcuffs, so we packed and moved, then sought relief through the court system. People wouldn't believe how old fashioned IT systems are behind big online shops etc. Like anyone with decent IT skills would be able to crack them. Some of them are 30 years old command liners that are only in place because everything got built around them and have never been replaced. I was a contractor for NASA. I still fully support the agency, but I was extremely bugged when I learned that each separate NASA center, for example, JPL, Kennedy, Ames, Goddard, hides many of its inventions and breakthroughs from the other centers so that when HQ is ready to assign a big mission, and a lot of dollars, to one center, they have a better chance to compete over the others. Look what we invented. Ames can't do this over there. Give us the next moon or better. But the downside is that there is a ton of reinvention and duplicated efforts going on. Sometimes years of work go down the drain when another center does the same thing faster. My perspective was, you all work for NASA, share knowledge, collaborate. I was frequently ordered to tone down anything revealing when speaking to other centers. That's not at all different from how the big national labs used to work. The rivalry between Lawrence Livermore and Los Alamos is almost legendary. Supposedly they got better about sharing but it wouldn't shock me if they were still up to the same hijinks. McDonald's made me sign a NDA regarding a robbery that took place during a graveyard shift. They made me take a freaking polygraph test because they thought my ex and I were involved due to the simple fact that I had stopped by that day to pick up some documents. I was a manager. I had business to do. Frick you. Mick Mirda. There are many questions. Some wonder if I made this up, request details or explanations. I'll give some extra context and I'll head out. I was around 19 20 years old. This was almost a decade ago. I was pretty naive then. By the time I realized this might have been illegal, I mentioned to a co-manager and she advised me to not bring it up again as to not involve myself in trouble or damage my future job prospects. I worked at a franchise located in a rural area with an almost entire Latino population, where everyone knows each other. I took home some of the weekly schedules and production projections for highlighting. They would make me do this highlighting crap weekly. The store manager in charge would allow me to do this on a weekly basis. The area supervisor called to tell me I'd have to take a polygraph test. He mentioned that I could decline taking the polygraph test but I'd be taken off the schedule and I wouldn't be trusted again. The police showed up to the restaurant, picked me up, held me at the investigation building for around 8 hours, and then they sent me home. When I passed the polygraph test, the area supervisor called again to mention that he appreciated that I took the polygraph, glad to hear I passed, and that he would always have my back. I roll. I left the job at Meardnalds in 2014. At least it makes for a story to tell. I had to sign an NDA to be cast in a pretty big movie this year with a bunch of Marvel people. I know literally nothing of any value to everyone. All I did was dress up and stand out in the snow staying perfectly still and freezing my butt off next to Tom Holland for a week. Spider-Man 3. Winter Spider confirmed. I once had to sign an NDA to get a price on a printer for my sign shop. This was a printer that was only sold by one distributor, by the way, so there wasn't even any direct competition on this particular model. I think their gimmick was that if they make a really big deal out of giving you this super secret pricing that you'd be lulled into thinking it was really something special. They weren't worried about you going to a different supplier, they wanted to be able to offer different prices to different customers. This is a concept called price discrimination and is a very common practice. 
Never had an NDA on this but if I give too much info, I'll get tagged and likely get in serious trouble. BCBS had a severe security breach back in 2007. If you were with them in a certain area of the country and ever called in the number for help on your account, all of your personal info was caught by a third party. Every caller, every piece of data, they never disclose this breach. That's really common. Companies do their absolute best to stop word getting out they were hacked. There's serious consequences to it. I listen to various cybersec podcasts and stories like this comes up as a matter of fact all the time. We reused buffet style food served in a cafeteria that was supposed to compost and record as waste. The health inspector says anything that's left open buffet style and serve yourself can't be taken back and reposed because it's not monitored and could be cross contaminated or many other things. Nobody should ever eat buffet style if avoidable for your information. But the Fortune 500 company I worked for was unhappy about the money they were losing by composting the food so they make us keep it and ray. Serve it later or repropose it into soup or casserole or something. Personally I never did this and just waited for my boss to leave and compost the food but others I worked with were too worried about losing their jobs to go against orders. I didn't want to be fired but felt morally obligated to not feed people food that was meant to be garbage. So I just sneaky tossed it out when nobody was looking because I got paid really well there. We all had to sign NDAs saying we wouldn't tell the media or non-employees about recipes and procedures that covered leftover food and food waste. Eventually my boss discovered what I was doing and I stood up to him about not being willing to reuse garbage as food so we agreed that I'd just quit because while they could force me not to talk about it. They couldn't actually force me to do something illegal for my job and I was clearly refusing to do it. You should have just reported them to the health inspector. A non-disclosure agreement can't be used to hide illegal activity and if it went to court it would be deemed unenforceable. Sure they can prevent you from disclosing recipes procedures but that can't prevent you from reporting violations to the proper authorities. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.